Generation after generation, humankind has been explorers. From first stepping out of caves, to crossing oceans, and walking on the moon. There are those of us whose curiosity drives us forward into the unknown. Only recent generations can step into the truly unknown because we were born in the age of information where one can venture into space or the furthest reaches of the planet Earth. Others venture into the far reaches of only what we know and are still amazed of what they discover in their own backyards. As snowmobilers, our next frontier can be as dramatic as crossing an unknown range far from anything to riding one ridge further in your favorite spot. In the mountains on a snowmobile, the terrain seems to fall away beneath our tracks. In a world where determination and the fuel left in our tanks are the only limiting factors to where we can go. In a sport where the destination is literally the journey and the only reward is returning home alive, we venture ever forward. From the riders in our own towns, to the country and around the world, we are one nation, a nation of riders. Snowmobiles have really come a long way in the last few years. You can access terrain like never before, but the mountains are so vast, there's endless exploration around here. It's crazy with the amount of country and terrain and you know just different things out here, you're really a stranger in your own backyard. Every time you go in there, there's a new experience, there's a new spot you find, there's a new section of trees, there's a new loop you can do. And I think that's one of the most special things about riding snowmobiles, that feeling of not being 100% positive of where you're going or what your day is gonna be like, I think is kind of a, you know, part of the excitement in this sport. There's some very technical terrain in this area. You got fields that you're just power turning in, long climbs that just seem to go on forever, and you think you're gonna blow a belt every time you hold your sled open for more than two minutes. While I've ridden a lot in Afton, I'm excited to explore some new zones on this trip and really uh, just find some things in my own backyard that I've never really experienced before. Afton was first settled in 1885 along the western border of the Salt River Range. The salts that rise to almost 11,000 feet are one of the many ranges that make this part of the Rockies one of the best places to ride in the country. With 50% more antlers in the famous antler arch that spans the town's main street than people in the town, Afton is another of Wyoming's little towns with big backyards. This small town was our entry into mountain riding and holds a special place in our hearts. With all the time we have spent here in our early days boondocking, coming out for trips out west, we still felt like strangers in this vast backcountry. Afton, Wyoming is just a short drive from our home base in Idaho, yet we venture into an area completely new to us all. From our newer local friends to kindred Midwest riders we've known a long time, we'll team up to see what exists just around the corner in our new backyard. Lodging accommodations in Afton haven't changed in a long time until Kodiak Mountain Resort came along. This place is pretty incredible. It's got great trailer access, which is important for me and you know our crew. All the cabins are smart cabins, so we're always connected. We can be on social media and be posting up all our videos. The curved wood trusses, the sign out front, it's super modern, but yet rustic, very comfortable, and uh, it's luxurious, that's for sure. Something I really look forward to after a long day of riding and just being exhausted is getting back home, taking a shower, and relaxing in these cabins. They're just so plush and make the experience of riding out here that much better. It's just a nice little self-contained community. You could rent out a bunch of these cabins with a bunch of people and just have a great time. Yeah, there's a few different forks. I think we'll go. So the trail kind of shakes back here a little bit, and then you take a right, and you start to gain elevation. But there's a canyon straight ahead of us. I think we'll go back into that. No, I'm super excited. We don't get a lot of opportunities to come ride the salt, just because it's so easy for us to ride out our back door. We don't like to load up the flood if we don't have to. Usually when we go on these trips, we link up with some local people that will take us out to some of their favorite zones. This trip, we're kind of the locals. We've been riding these zones for, you know, probably three years now and it's unbelievable how much country there is out here and how much you can explore and you never see the same part of the world twice. 
Dylan and I are fortunate enough to live out here in Snowmobile for six months out of the year. Having a zone like this, you know, an hour and a half from where we're living this winter and exploring it and knowing it now like the back of our hands, that's really awesome and exciting. Getting into the new zone immediately, it's got awesome tree riding. It's like eight miles back to some of the coolest terrain in Western Wyoming. The thing that's really incredible is there's never gonna come a point where you've run out of trails. Most of the time we end up going out our backyard, but even if you drive 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour, you're always gonna be able to find new terrain here. Um, it's really just unending possibilities. That's always interesting as like someone who thinks you have some areas pretty well figured out and then all of a sudden it's like, oh hey, let's go up this way and check this whole new zone out. It's always mind blowing to just kind of lay, lay eyes on country like that. Um, but it's, it was super fun just in the sense that new group of guys, you know, hadn't met anybody. Um, and then we were all able to kind of go into a zone and have a blast. Sam and Tana live in Wyoming's incredible Star Valley, where little towns fill the space surrounded by the mighty Salt River and the Grays River Ranges. Alpine is a really interesting place where we live because a lot of the local businesses you'll see are called Three Rivers, and that's because three different rivers, the Grays River, the Salt River, and the Snake River, all come to a confluence right in Alpine. The Salt River Range, it goes on for so long. You can go from one side and it'll have three or four inches of snow down to like Commissary Ridge on a powder day and it'll have 12 on like one of these upside down storm days. You also have all of these mountain ranges. You have like the Palisades Wilderness Study Area, you have the Grays, you're 45 minutes away from the Tetons. I feel like there's riding for every type of snowmobiler down here and that's why I think it's so fantastic. They too can be strangers in their own surroundings, enjoying the challenge and excitement of visiting new terrain with each and every adventure. Growing up here, I've quickly realized that there's always a new trail to explore. That's one of the reasons I'm still here. Um, it's just that, that lifetime potential of always seeing new things um, and kind of chasing that, that new zone. I almost think of it as like the early explorers, right, that came out west, had no idea what they were going to find. That's the closest experience we can get this day and age of just being able to go into uncharted territory almost and uh, just kind of go see what's out there. We've been exploring this zone and making some good progress, really getting a good idea of what's back there, but it's been really cloudy and visibility has been pretty poor because of all the snow that we're getting. We knew generally where we were going today, but we experienced some seriously flat lighting, especially when crossing between saddles of bulls. Jay Menaberry is recognized in our industry as a premier rider. We love every time we get a chance to get out and ride with him. It's looking like tomorrow might be some blue skies and some sun, which will make it even easier to explore this zone. Sounds like the guys from Duradec are making the trip over from North Dakota. We met them at Heydays and had a lot of fun with them, so I'm really looking forward to riding with them this trip. While we've been here, it's been just spectacular. We got to shred some pretty insane trees with some pretty awesome snow quality. Out here, they call it East Coasting, an area where you just ride until there's not a flake of powder left on the hill. That's what we did going into this zone, and we were able to push farther and farther and just track it up to whatever extent we wanted. And there's always fresh terrain to find. Shade and Hunter come by their passion for design and engineering naturally, picking up the trade from their father and grandfather. They started their company Duradec after building their first sled deck for themselves. They quickly realized they could make a better product and sell it at a better price. Having partnered with them on our mission to share snowmobiling, there are only a handful of parking lots where our deck isn't getting some looks from fellow riders. 
Our uh, grandfather started up a canvas shop back in the 60s. Our father, he's uh, the inventor of the electric tarp system. So a lot of our experience came from our grandfather and our dad. And we built our first Duradac just because we didn't really have the ability to get out here. I built one that was made out of all aluminum and uh, had a lot of inquiries on it, surprisingly, just from people seeing it coming out to the parking lots and whatnot. Two years ago or so, we really started to push it because we figured, hey, we might actually have a product that the market seems to enjoy and, and want. We don't have to pull a trailer. We have to worry about axles and bearings and lights. Guy could take it through the car wash, uh, ramp assist, and one guy can load everything up. One thing took after another, and now we have a few different styles to offer between the public. I wanted to have, you know, a higher end deck that people could have and obviously try and keep the price as low as I could to be able to get into the consumer's hands. When you plan a week in the backcountry with friends in advance, you can't easily count on snow or decent weather. However, for this season, we've been blessed by the gods of weather and snow. First in Revelstoke, getting to ride some of the deepest early season snow in the hemisphere, and then experiencing a rare, stable, high pressure day that took us up into alpine terrain and incredible vistas. Here in Afton, we have been blessed once again with deep, deep snow and potential for clear days on the horizon. If our luck continues, we'll get the chance to venture into the alpine of the almighty Salt River Range. There we will experience what we will know to be an expansive, incredible place to ride and explore. One of my favorite clientele type is the snowmobilers. We love when they come in from the mountain and they're cold and, and they've been working hard all day, we know exactly what to do for them. We love to warm up the hot rocks, get their muscles feeling good. I've worked on probably thousands of people in my 10 years and that comes with a whole range of, of people from somebody who's never had a massage before to somebody who comes every single week. It's amazing to work with, with my family. Everybody has their roles. When we needed to roll sod this summer, the entire family showed up to help. When we, we got it done, we knocked it out. It's, it's really fun to, to work with the family. I like to cook, but I didn't know I loved to cook. Just the past three, four years, it kind of just came out and it's been fun. We've wanted to have a restaurant on site. Then my dad's like, well, Jason likes to do this barbecue stuff. How about we talk about doing that and it kind of just grew from there. Most of it is, is Texas style barbecue. Um, we do pulled pork, we do brisket, we do ribs. Really, the thing I like about what I do is I have some creative control so I can do whatever I want. Spending this past week at Kodiak Mountain Resort has been incredible. Waking up in the morning and cooking breakfast with everybody, talking about the day, making a plan, and then coming back, being able to hang out and just relax, nothing like it. You're willing to take your experience to the next level, and I think that shows through the way that they run this place. Typically here in Wyoming, there's a trail that you can push up that's either groomed or marked, and that'll get you into the zone. But to explore deeper and get farther into the woods or into the alpine, that's a little bit more challenging. Especially with the train we've been trying to travel through these past few days, we're full on <laughs> rallying through these trees and you know through terrain to try to get to new spots. People are getting stuck, people are getting sidetracked, you know, pulling lines in there. It's like, come on guys, let's, let's just go there. But you're having too much fun, you just kind of throw that stuff to the wind and just have, have fun and take in the moment and you know, pull skis. It's, it's what it's all about. I can't wait to push back even further and see if we can't connect a few more zones. Like I'm, I'm excited to see what else this place has in store and uh, really learn it pretty well. Up in the Alpine, we can see the scale and ruggedness of the Salt River Range. Looking at GPS, we can start to get our bearings, gazing into the distance and seeing some of the other spots we know well from our time here. Each of these adventures into what we will consider our local ranges reminds us of how we will probably always feel like new explorers in the mountains.
After riding the zone for two days and then getting a Bluebird day, it was almost like we had never been there before. So to go in there and be able to see everything and have a better idea, see some reference points and know where we're at, that was really awesome. Today we've pushed pretty deep back into this uh, zone and it's cool, we look on the inReach and we can see that we're getting close to other zones that we're familiar with. That's one of the most amazing things about riding a snowmobile is the things you get to see. You're able to access so much terrain, find so many neat places and see these views. It's really incredible. This zone specifically is super diverse. You got some meadows people can go play around in and the snow is deep. You got some open trees, some alpine bowls, some tight trees, some nasty ravines. I mean, I think that makes it really fun because you never know what you're going to run into next when you're out exploring. We carry saws in our packs uh, for when we get into hairy situations on the sled, but that also makes it really convenient to build a fire at lunchtime. This week it was so cold, it was almost a necessity. The snow has been so good, you cannot ride all day without burning a full tank of gas and not being able to get out of the mountains. I mean, you definitely need to t stop and take a break, and a fire is the perfect way to do that midday. One of our favorite things to do in the backcountry is make a loop. It's one thing to go in and out the same way, but if you can loop around a zone and end up back on the trail, there's really nothing like that. So we decided to try. We made some points of reference. We were able to navigate this loop about 40 miles on the GPS. We all got back to the truck and we were super pumped. It was just an awesome day, great snow, and we accomplished the goal that we set out to do. We're all snowmobilers at heart. And we all love to go out in the mountains and have fun, and you know, this is our playground. So it's pretty fun just to be able to live the dream and go out here and ride sleds all the time and you know, kick it with buddies. I've met the guys from Duradec a couple times before. You know, everybody says they can ride, so I was interested to see what their ability was. They're rippers. They were uh, going everywhere we could, doing re-entries, big jumps. It's fun riding with other dudes from the Midwest because they have the same type of style. We all like fly it on the trail just because that's what we grew up doing. It's kind of fun. It feels like you're back home, but you're still out here in the mountains. As far as the whole Boondock Nation crew, great dudes to work with, great guys to be friends with, great people to come and hang out with. You know, you can tell that they push each other a little bit here and there. One does one thing, another one's got to try it. And, and honestly, that's what's going to make you better. Is, is constantly pushing one another, and then those guys are the perfect team for that. This place holds a special spot in my heart. There's a lot of my friends from Idaho Falls that are like, ah, I'm not driving all the way to Afton or all the way to Star Valley to go ride. It's, it's too far, we'll just go ride somewhere closer here. But, you know, I'll drive the extra hour. I don't care. It's just so awesome here. We've been coming here for years and it just feels like home to me, especially after knowing a few more zones now. It's, it's going to be it's going to be a game changer for sure. I think I'm going to be spending quite a bit more time here. After each ride, each adventure, each ridge we cross, our passion for the sport grows. With that, our experience riding sleds and our understanding the mountains increases. No matter how we might expand our knowledge, we still take solace in the fact that backcountry riding is a lifelong pursuit. While something that might literally just be around the corner is a world away, it is our mission as explorers to constantly look for what's next.